Thank you. Thank you so much. We have come so far, yet we have so very far to come. Prejudice should not exist in this world. Therefore, prejudice, by all means, should not exist in music cars. are up in Portland, more specifically we are, where are we in? Oregon City, I guess it is, I think. And, what's the name of this place? What's it called? Wichita Pub. Wichita Pub. Never heard of it, but by God, we're all here. So, uh... Um, my GPS wasn't thrilled when I was coming up here. Yeah, mine too. on the left, and I... Yeah. I mean, I'm driving back and forth. So we're up here because Keith and Kevin lost their pop, John McCurdy, a couple weeks ago, and this is the celebration of life they're having for him and they invited people to bring their hot rods out. Well, John had a number of gorgeous hot rods, including that 34 there and that um, Anglia there, and they're gonna be for sale soon. So we got all these gorgeous cars, and then way down at the end, I can get Derbs to pan that way in a moment. Way down at the end, past all the cool cars, would be my worn out Dodge. Uh, not exactly in the same league as these things, but the air blows cold and that's what matters. So anyway, we're here at this, uh, celebration of life for Keith's dad, John McCurdy, and who do I run into but a blast from my past. I see him periodically at the races, but Mike Myers, I'm going to try to introduce you guys because there's stories here. Come on, young man, you're you're up now. So this is Mike Myers, and that's M-Y-E-R-S, by God, don't screw it up. And Mike and I have a history because he's worked for NHRA and Woodburn, and they all kind of blend together for me. But he knows where most of the bodies are buried because I think he buried most of them. I think that's true. But oh my God, his story is incredible before I got involved and I got a cool story to tell you. But check this out. He's been driving, drag racing since the late 60s and in 76 purchased this badass dragster. Get a picture of it up, we don't wanna show that in a minute. And uh, ran for a couple years, sold it in 78, went on to work for NHRA and Tracks, being the official, which is why I know him. I'll tell you the story in a minute. Um, but he reacquired the same damn car in 2017. Holy crap. And so now he's got, if you can get this to show up, Derbs. So now he's got that car about ready to go. And he's going to, instead of being a tech official, getting me in trouble, he's going to show up at Woodburn. He's going to be the damn driver's seat. Just the heritage is amazing. Uh, my, my dad had a, a dragster when I was a kid. And we tried to find that and we never could find it. So I'm amazed that he not only acquired it, um, but they were apparently pretty good to him and getting it back to him. Very cool story. All right, so I told you that story to tell you this story. So thankfully, he doesn't remember the first part, thankfully. So uh, in 1996, Blast from the Past, that's when I licensed in the alcohol dragster. Put your hands together, my best ET, my best, not the average, my best ET to license in 1996 in the top alcohol dragster class, that's even before Federal Mogul took over, was a put your hands together 621 at 218. Now we expect to be 225 in a fuel car at half track. So things have changed. Nonetheless, I'd never driven anything before that. So when I got in that alcohol dragster, the chassis uh, was from a friend, Dave Henderson, who owned it, but it was the X. Blaine uh, and Alan Johnson alcohol car that he'd won the world championship with at that time just a couple years earlier. Good car. We didn't have enough money to do this. Of course, what, you don't need money, you just need passion, right? That's all we need. So uh, Russ partnered with me and harvested one of the spare spare motors from their Top Alcohol Funny car at the time. So it wasn't a dragster combo. But by God, we didn't care. We were ready to go racing, Top Alcohol racing. Put it all together and I got licensed in 96 in June, I think. And Russ got to drive it at, a, at an outing, a points race. But when he was first driving, check this out. First time I'm there as a car owner now, thinking I'm all that in a sack of chips, and I was wrong. 
but Russ made the first lap in it. At the time, I've got the 2010 SRT now, but at the time, I had a 96, then brand new, 96 Impala SS that we put a stroker motor in, so it was supposed to go fast. It really didn't, but it was supposed to make you think it did. Anyway, I'm there with that as a tow rig, so I'm so excited because we just made our first lap as a car owner of a top alcohol dragster. So I head down the return road at, I don't know, 80, 90 miles an hour, some obscene number that was apparently ever so slightly over the edge of the rules. Who'd have thunk it? I didn't see a speed limit sign, but apparently he knew where they were. So he pulled me over there and very politely leaned in the window and said something effective, kid, if you don't slow this thing down, you'll never be here again to race this thing. He was polite, but I felt like, oh my God, my first time as a car owner, the first day, I'm gonna get thrown out of my ear and never be able to do this. Thankfully, he doesn't remember that story. But you know, the one he does remember is a few years later, fast forward to 24 now, I'd proposed to my bride, now bride, at, uh, at the track. Well, we were there running this fall classic event and I don't even remember why we did it, but I got the opportunity to race against an alcohol funny car, Brian Howe. Whoop ass, badass, top notch alcohol funny car. But with all due respect, an injected nitro car should not lose a, a race to a top alcohol funny car. We just shouldn't. But nonetheless, that wasn't good enough for me, so I turned the wick up. By God, this thing's gonna eat and hunt. So we take off, front ends in the air, and I don't see him. Life's going good. And all of a sudden, with the front in the air, starts going into tire shake, which loses traction, slams the front into the ground, and the aluminum spindle that was on that thing to save weight let go. So the front left spindle just snapped off. So I've got the front left tire coming back at me at a high rate of speed. It glances off the windshield. That's not the crazy part. Here's the crazy part. I can now see Brian pulling out on me because I lifted and for about nine tenths of a second in the, in the video and the race back data, you can see that I paused and did nothing because for a short time I thought, well, crap, if I put my foot back down, it'll pick the front end up. What could possibly go wrong? This would be great. Well, then <laughs> somehow wisdom took over and I realized, wait a minute, you're gonna have to lift at some point. And when you do, you wanna come down on nothing on the left side at 220 is all the thing did, or at 90 or whatever is going then. So I got off the throttle and pulled the brake. It wasn't a big deal, it was hard to steer because I only had one tire on the ground at that point. But the story is my bride, who was then my fiance, uh, she went running down the racetrack after me. Keith, who we're here for with his uh, father's passing, Keith was on the team. He had to go grab her and say, Robbie, you'll get there quicker if you'll get in the pickup with us, because that's where we're headed. Let's go get him. So we get down there and the only thing that was wounded and it was severely injured was my pride. And apparently Mike had been involved with that story and uh, that process with getting Robbie hooked up to be where she needed to be. So I got another story to tell you, but this is Mike Myers, and he's got his car back and got it fixed up, and he's going to go back out now and license again at Woodburn sometime in the next few months, couple months, something. So that's badass cool. Sells it in 78, reacquires it in 2017. Holy crap, Batman, that never happens. And he's got it glued back together. It's a gorgeous hot rod. So when we get the privilege to be at the track with him, then we'll shoot some pictures of that and show you, but it's, it's very cool. So... You don't remember the, hey, dumbass, you're going way too fast story. Thankfully, that's really good. But you remember the Robbie story. Tell me what you remember about that. All I remember was she was very panicked, obviously. <laughs> she I can her, vouch for that. She saw her future husband possibly, you know, ending up in a heap. And so I got her calmed down because, you know, the, the safety guys were taking care of everything else. Yes, that's right. Uh, so she was the the thing that needed to be dealt with at the moment. <laughs> uh, that's, well, that's diplomacy right there. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, we had um, a racer from Yakima, I won't be able to remember his name, crashed at Spokane oh. when I was on the safety truck. Okay. And when we got to the car, he'd bounced off of both walls in a super fast car. He was hyperventilating, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, 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 I get it. Been and there. Brad New said, you can cut the cage off of it. You have our permission. Wow. And I thought, 
And wow. I don't need your permission. Right. And That's true. He, I found the EMT who is now there, and I said, you need to calm him down. Once he's calm, he'll be able to get out of the car. Right. And he did. He that makes perfect sense. Car. So we didn't have to do that. That's awesome. You don't meet, meet many officials that have brains enough to know how it really works. That's a brilliant move, very mature, it's awesome. Uh, Frankie, when he used to run the safety truck. Yep. You know Mad Mike Molina. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, uh, double A's uh, gas. Gas supercharger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He bounced off both walls in Medford. <laughs> and oh, I heard about that. One of, the, one of the best stories I can remember. We rushed <clears> over <throat> to the car and Frankie leans in and he says, how are you, Mike? And I said, oh man, I'm hurting. <laughs> Frankie says, can you get out of the car? And he says, oh, I don't know, man. Frankie says, not a problem. We'll go get the jaws of life and cut the cage off. He says, hold on, I think I can get out of the car. Amazing, the recovery that happens. Yeah, that's the way I'd be too. Like, no, got my car. That's hilarious. All right, so here's the story I'm gonna tell you that's a story on me, but it's pretty damn funny. When I was licensing that car, keep in mind, I'd never been on the racetrack in anything other than the dually. I didn't know it go fast, and frankly, the car didn't go fast. But to me, to step from a 27 second dually to a six second alcohol dragster was, a, I, God, I thought it was top fuel. We, yeah, we really weren't, but I thought it was. Anyway, so the, I remember we made uh, uh, four hits on Saturday and they had to be launch, launch, and then intermediate, and I was having trouble. The next day, Sunday, I had to make two full pulls and I was scared poopless, as they say, because I couldn't see where I was going. The vibration was so stinking bad, I had no idea what lane I was in. And this is gonna sound terribly sexist, sorry for your luck, but I can remember then that Tiffany Highland from Eugene Highland Construction had an alcohol dragster and I thought, dear God, if a girl can do this, I should be able to do it. I know that's sexist, don't write the notes, I get it, it's retarded. But the point is, that's what I said and felt. And so Russ talked to me and realized that my helmet was hitting the top of the cage and it was transferring way too much vibration. So I sat down lower, cured the problem. But I had to go to bed and come up, uh, wake up next morning knowing this thing's got to go all the way A to B. And I've never seen where I'm at yet. Now what? Thankfully it worked. There's one of the hot rods starting up now. Thankfully it worked. But here's the crazy part. It's the first time I've been under power to the finish line. I don't think that stock. What's your guess? Uh, really close. Yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, it's the first time I've ever been to the finish line under power. And this whopping, as I say, put your hands together, 621 at 218. It's horrible, I get it. We go faster than that to half track now. But the point is, I thought it was a million miles an hour. Something happened. I didn't get the shoots out in time. And so even though I wasn't going very fast, I ended up on this second turnout. Woodburn has two. The one where everybody uses and the other one that you shouldn't need, but it's there. I end up down there getting it shut off and I was so amped up, I get out of the car in my fire suit, sit my backside on the top of the cage, swing my legs around to look like the big dog I thought I was. And as I did, I lost my balance and I fell ass over a tea kettle backwards off the cage, but not to fear, my driving boot caught on the injector. So the throttle control on the injector now has my boot and I fall to the ground and I'm hanging upside down off the injector and I'm licensing. What do you think of me so far? So I, all I remember is all the safety people were back up at the other return road I should have used. So there aren't many people down here. In fact, the only guy that showed up was Jeff Eaton, now retired but I see him once in a while, good guy. He shows up down there and I could tell by the look on his face for about two seconds he thought, oh my God, what happened here? Only two seconds, because right after that he realized you're just a stinking idiot. That's what happened here. And I couldn't get him to stop laughing long enough. Get me off of this thing. I don't want my guys to show up with me hanging upside down from the injector scoop. Oh my God. So he eventually got me off of that and we've told that story numerous times. So he kept us safe when we were there and I was just too stupid to know the difference. And I've been seeing him at race tracks since I've been doing it since the mid nineties. And so now to see this come full circle for Mike, and we're not kids anymore, so we each have health issues. He's got some challenging ones, but to know that he's gonna be able to have that same hot rod that he ran in the 70s back out, that's badass. And I wanna be there that day. So I just ran into him here at the Celebration of Life. 
thought y'all might want to hear the story or two that's mildly entertaining. So thank you for following, liking, subscribing, and all that stuff. Mike, thank you for being there for us and keeping us safe. We really appreciate you. I have a uh, card at home that I used to give to people who bitched when you found a problem. <laughs> yeah. That, that said, asking me to overlook a safety issue is asking me to take a different feel on your life. That's true. Usually shut them right up. It's yeah. pretty amazing. If it doesn't, they shouldn't be there. <laughs> Anyway, thank you all. Just really appreciate Mike and wanted to share this story with you guys. Thank you. Cool, thank you. I really appreciate that. I'll get that posted in a couple of days. Very cool.